Welcome Promax users. My name is Zach Ormland. I help out our Promax process simulation software users in the Northeast US and Eastern Canada. I help develop and update the Promax dehydration tool we will be reviewing today. This template was created to allow engineers and air quality teams to quickly and easily generate emission reports for multiple triethylene glycol units at a time. It was designed to be an improved and easy to use tool for those accustomed to using glycalc for emissions reporting. This tool can be used for permits, potential to emit estimates, annual compliance, and greenhouse gas calculations. Here's my contact information on the slide. Please don't hesitate to call or email me with any questions related to the presentation, or if there's anything else we could be doing to help you. We are very excited to announce that the EPA, as of March 31st, 2022, has designated our Promax software as an approved alternative test method for estimating emissions from glycol dehydration units under subpart HH. This means that you can use Promax instead of glycalc for estimating emissions from dehydration facilities when reporting to state agencies and the EPA. Promax is the only process simulator that is accepted as an alternative test method and has gone through this multi-year approval process with the EPA. There's a link to the official EPA notice in the video comments, or if you let us know, we can email you a link. With this news, we wanted to create a new instructional video for you detailing how to use the Promax dehydration tool. Due to its flexibility, ease of use, and accuracy, Promax's dehydration tool has many advantages over Glycalc. It utilizes a user-friendly Excel interface. The tool accounts for many different glycol unit equipment configurations. Promax matches plant data for dehydration systems very well, and when compared to Glycalc, emission estimates are often more conservative. Promax has a more comprehensive component database. And this is especially important as some state environmental agencies have increased interest in tracking methanol emissions in particular from TEG units. Promax can accurately estimate these methanol emissions while Glycalc cannot. The dehydration tool can simulate up to 100 facilities at a time and generate a comprehensive emissions report for each facility. This allows users to set it and forget it, define the inputs, hit run, and reports will be available for review after the tool finishes running. On top of subpart HH, there is also an output section that satisfies subpart W greenhouse gas reporting requirements. Now keep in mind that this template is intended to be used for emission estimates only. If you are looking to design a new glycol dehydration unit, troubleshoot an existing facility, or rate and size equipment in the system from an engineering perspective, that needs to be done outside of this tool in a separate Promax simulation. The dehydration tool contains three main parts. The Promax simulation itself, the embedded Excel interface controlling the inputs to the model, and once the model has finished running, the final emission reports. Since the model utilizes Promax's scenario tool to communicate between Excel and the simulation, users only need to refer to the embedded Excel workbook to set up their dehydration facilities. Let's start by reviewing the Excel portion. There are four worksheets in the embedded Excel workbook. The first sheet contains the template instructions which provides new users with a guide on how to use the tool. We also provide a list of dehydration tool assumptions to give users transparency on how other model inputs have been configured. The assumptions list shows where these values can be altered in the Promax simulation if desired to do so. The subpart W sheet contains the simulation outputs in a format that matches the EPA template for subpart W reporting. The outputs were taken directly from the EPA's Excel report form that can be found on their website. This allows for easy uploading of annual greenhouse gas emission reports from dehydration units. Now let's return to the dehydration scenarios sheet. This is the most important section of the tool. It is where users will set up the inputs to best match actual dehydration facilities operating conditions, which Promax will then use to predict emissions. We will do a thorough walkthrough of each of the inputs to give you a clear picture of how to configure it on your own. You'll notice at the top of the dehydration scenarios sheet, there are three buttons. The enter facilities button allows you to select how many dehydration units you want to estimate emissions for. This will add columns to your worksheet for you to configure each facility. The clear button will clear out all of the facility user inputs and return the number of dehydration units back to one.
Under the dehydration facility section, you can provide a name for each individual site. This name will appear in the reports. The annual operating hours input is used as a multiplier for the yearly emissions calculation. The simplified glycol dehydration unit diagram below will be used as a visual aid to represent where user inputs are entered into the simulation. The wet gas specifications is where users will input conditions of the gas entering the glycol contactor. The required inputs are gas temperature, pressure, flow rate, and defining how much water is in the gas. Use the drop down menu in the wet gas specifications input cell to choose between a few options. This drop down functionality is used in most of the sections of the dehydration tool. The saturated option shown in the slide will fully saturate the feed gas with water. This represents the most water the gas can hold in the vapor phase. This is the recommended option since it conservatively estimates how much water is in the feed. The other two options are known water content and fraction saturated. They are less commonly used, but can be chosen if water sampling information is available. Note that depending on your wet gas specification input, certain cells are grayed out and contain black text. This is following PROMAX convention to prevent you from defining information not used for the calculation. Inputs should only be entered into cells with white grid backgrounds and blue text. The purpose of a glycol dehydration unit is to remove water from the feed gas to prevent hydrate formation and to meet contractual pipeline specifications downstream. While TEG does a good job of removing water from the system, it also absorbs some hydrocarbons in the process. The higher the TEG rate circulated in the dehydration unit, the higher the absorption of hydrocarbons, and in turn, the higher the emissions will be. This makes the lean glycol specification section very important. This is where you will select how much glycol will be circulated through the system. When possible, we recommend using the target circulation rate drop-down option. For potential to emit calculations, you can use the maximum lean glycol pumping rate, and for compliance reports, you can use an average circulation rate. For design cases where the lean glycol rate would not be known, you can use the target circulation ratio option. A ratio of three gallons of glycol circulated per pound of water in the feed gas is typically adequate to remove enough water to meet pipeline specification. Promax can also estimate how much TEG is needed to meet a user-defined dry gas water content. By setting the drop down to the target water content option, you can input a dry gas water content specification and Promax will calculate how much glycol needs to be circulated to meet that value. The next section allows the user to select the number of stages to be used for the glycol absorber calculation. This will be used to predict how much water and hydrocarbons get absorbed by the glycol. If this is a design case and internals of the absorber are not known, leave this setting at the default value of three stages. If the column is trayed, divide the number of real trays by four to determine the number of ideal stages. For example, if the actual contactor has 12 trays, select three absorber stages. This follows the 25% efficiency rule of thumb for glycol absorbers recommended by GPSA. If it is a packed column, for every five feet of packing, use one ideal stage. For example, if there is 20 feet of total packing in the contactor, select four ideal stages. By operating at close to atmospheric pressure and high temperatures, the glycol reboiler helps remove water and hydrocarbons to ensure a pure glycol is circulated back to the absorber. Common temperatures range from 360 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. TEG begins to degrade above 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so it is not recommended to input reboiler temperatures greater than this value. If reboiler temperature is not known for the facility, we recommend using 400 for a conservative estimate. The glycol absorber typically operates at relatively high pressures. This helps the glycol absorb more water. The regeneration step, however, operates close to atmospheric pressure. As the rich glycol is reduced in pressure, absorbed hydrocarbons will vaporize in the rich flash tank. Users will define whether a rich flash tank is in the facility or not using the drop-down for flash tank specifications. For sites with flash tanks, define the operating temperature, pressure, and where the flash vapors are routed. There are four options. The vapors can be sent to a flare. They can be compressed and recycled back to the glycol contactor. They can be used as stripping gas in the regenerator, or they can be vented to the atmosphere. Other options for stripping gas include nitrogen, which is quite uncommon, 
or using a slipstream of dry gas. The dry gas is taken from the dehydrated sales gas exiting the glycol contactor. Define whether they are in use and their flow rates. Stripping gas is helpful for purifying the glycol during the regeneration step and in turn reducing the water content of the sales gas. However, most of the dry stripping gas will exit the regenerator overheads, potentially leading to higher emissions. As with the flash tank vapors, users need to define where glycol regenerator vapors are sent. They can be routed to a control device or the vapors can be vented to the atmosphere. Some glycol regenerators have a small reflux coil at the top of the column. Cool rich glycol passes through the coil to provide a little bit of reflux at the top of the column. This will mainly lead to a reduction of triethylene glycol losses and emissions. Use the reflux coil regenerator dropdown to choose if one is present in your facility. Select whether the glycol pump in service is a gas injection pump or an electric pump. Kimray pumps are a common example of a gas injection pump. These require a low rate of high pressure feed gas to mix with the rich glycol. The high pressure gas provides the motive force for the pump needed to increase the pressure of the lean glycol up to contactor pressures. For gas injection pump types, input the gas injection pump volume ratio. This is a ratio of high pressure gas used for the pump divided by the volumetric flow rate of glycol circulated. This should be provided by the pump vendor. Due to the presence of the gas, the injection pumps lead to higher emissions, while electric pumps lead to no additional emissions. Due to methanol's presence in hydrate inhibitors, fracking fluids, and pipeline additives, methanol will likely be present in the feed gas entering glycol dehydrators. It is considered both a volatile organic compound and a hazardous air pollutant, so it is important to track through the glycol unit. Promax does an excellent job at handling hydrocarbon, water, and methanol systems. For the tool, users will define how much methanol is present in the feed. If sampling is possible at the contactor feed, inputting the inlet gas content on a mass or mole basis of methanol will be recommended. The next best option would be to use a known rate of methanol injected upstream. Users can also use the fraction saturation option to define how much methanol can be held in the feed gas. For facility runs with methanol present, it is recommended to adjust the annual operating hours to account for the months where methanol is injected. Then in a separate run, account for the remaining annual operating hours and run the tool without methanol in the feed. Some state agencies are requesting methanol emissions to be reported in permits and compliance summaries. As a result, if methanol is present in the gas feed, Promax must be used for emissions estimates as Glycal cannot handle systems with methanol. Choose if the regenerator overheads are sent to a BTEX condenser. If vapors are routed to a control device and a BTEX condenser is defined as not present in the facility, the regenerator vapors are sent to a flare only. If a BTEX condenser is present, input its operating temperature and define where the BTEX condenser vapors are routed, either to a flare or vented to the atmosphere. In the general specifications, users can define the atmospheric pressure based on the location of the facility and the destruction efficiency of flares in operation. The destruction efficiency indicates the percentage of the feed to a combustion device that will react. Note that the flash gas from the rich flash tank, regenerator overheads, and BTEX condenser vapors can all be routed to combustion devices in the tool. Input your contactor feed gas composition on a mole percentage basis. If desired, we can customize the list to better match the lab analyses that your company receives. If the fractions that you input do not sum to 100%, Promax will automatically normalize this composition. Users will be able to track if the run solved properly using the solve status feature. If the solve status is converged, then the run properly solved. The final section of the tool configures the report settings. The red tags in the tool indicate notes for each input. Just hover over the cell to review the note. This was modeled after our What's This helpful hints in Promax. First, users must define where the Excel report template file is saved on their machine. The Find button can be used to navigate through File Explorer until you locate the Excel file template.
Then users will choose the file path for where they want the generated reports to be saved to. The find button is available again to pull up File Explorer and choose a computer save location. If append all reports in one Excel workbook is set to yes, one Excel report will be generated and each facility's emission summaries will be on separate worksheets. If this setting is set to no, then a separate Excel file report will be generated for each run and the file name will be what was input for the facility name. The green start pro max button at the top of the dehydration scenarios worksheet should only be pressed once you have finished configuring each dehydration facility and you are ready for Promax to predict emissions and generate reports based on your inputs. Once you hit yes, Excel will transfer your inputs to Promax using the scenario tool. When solved, Promax will generate an Excel emissions report for each run. The generated Excel report contains two main sections an input summary that should match the user's inputs on the dehydration scenarios sheet, and an emissions report which details on a component-by-component -component basis the controlled and uncontrolled emissions from the regenerator and flash tank. For more details, there are additional sections for users to look through specific equipment component recoveries and certain process stream properties. These reports are quite comprehensive and satisfy state agency and EPA reporting requirements. If there is any additional information that would be valuable for us to add to the reports for you, please let us know. One final thing to note, it is important that if you want to save your changes to the tool, the save must be done from the Promax file rather than the embedded Excel sheet. This will ensure your facility input column information is available the next time you open up the tool. Hope you guys enjoyed the presentation and can use this video moving forward as a walkthrough as you start using the Promax dehydration tool. If you want a copy of the latest version of the dehydration tool and Excel report template, please call or email us. You can also download it from our website. If you have any questions about the presentation or want to look at a specific simulation case, we are happy to help with that as well. Keep in mind that if your company has access to Promax, model building support and training comes at no additional cost. We encourage you to reach out if we could be helping you with dehydration facilities and other air quality or process areas. Happy Promaxing!